Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. Before we put our truck in the air, we're gonna loosen and remove this hub cap. So it actually has little plastic caps that look like lug bolts, but they just screw onto the actual lug nuts. They're 22 millimeter. I'm just gonna use a 22 millimeter deep socket and a half inch ratchet. They shouldn't be on here very tight. Just kind of knock them loose, just like that. Once you get them loose, you can just use the socket to unscrew them. It should just come right off. So those stay in the hubcap. They've got little threads in them. The actual lug nuts have little threads in them. And that's how they're held on. Now we can loosen the real lug nuts. You can use a large breaker bar and a 22 millimeter socket. Break these lug nuts free while the vehicle is on the ground. get them all broken free. All right, with those all broken free, now we're gonna raise and support the vehicle. This is a really heavy truck, so make sure you have some heavy duty jack and a jack stands, and it's uh, supported securely. We're using our two post lift. Because our truck is extra long, we're gonna use this floor stand jack and just support the back of it right under the trailer hitch. We don't actually have to lift up on the truck, just bring this up until it touches the bottom. Just right there is perfect. Lug nuts are loose. I'm just gonna use a half inch ratchet and a 22 millimeter socket. Actually, they're real loose, so I will just remove them by hand. Wheel is seized to the hub, so I'm gonna put a lug nut back on. On the bottom. And I'll put one on the top just lightly. You're not threading them all the way down. This is just so when we knock it loose, the wheel doesn't fall off. I'll take a dead blow and just kind of knock it around the tire, try to break it free. Let's spray some rust penetrant here. This is an aluminum wheel, a steel hub. It's corroded to it. Spray some in the lug openings. You can use a heat gun or a small torch like this. I'm going to very carefully heat around the edge and get this aluminum wheel to expand a little bit and help knock it off the hub. So I'm not really applying direct heat right to it, I'm just kind of keeping it away. You don't have to get it red hot. Just want to get it warm enough that the wheel expands. That worked perfectly. These are pretty warm. I'll put our wheel down and out of the way. Before we try to remove the caliper, let's take a large flat bladed screwdriver, kind of wedge it in here. And what I'm gonna do is pry outwards. And that will compress the pistons inside here and loosen this up. So when I go to take the brake pads out, they'll come out easier. So just sort of gently kind of pry it. It's not gonna go very far, but it'll go enough that you'll be able to take the brake pads out. Caliper is held to the bracket with two Torx bolts here that are holding the slide pins in. The top one is very difficult to get to, so we're not gonna remove those. We're gonna remove it at the bracket bolts and pull the whole caliper off and then separate it uh, up here on the spring. So take an 18 millimeter socket and a good size ratchet or a breaker bar. It's kind of hard to have clearance in here. The ratchet, this long ratchet fits nicely. So I'm gonna loosen this one up. You don't want to go too far with it because you'll get caught between the springs. So just loosen it up and then take this out. And do the same for the bottom one. To 
pick the caliper up a little bit, help you take this bottom one out. Put that aside. As soon as you remove this top one, the caliper is going to want to fall. So make sure you hold it and you can use your fingers to remove the top one. And lay this right hip here on the spring. All right, so to get these apart, I'm flip it up, actually slide the pad down, and then you can put your fingers in here. You should be able to slide this up on the caliper slides if they're free moving. You might have to come in here and use a small flat bladed screwdriver and just pop the boots up and off the slide pins. Just be careful with them, you don't want to rip them. Then just push these apart. Try to go evenly. just like that. Take your brake pads out. While we're working on this caliper, we're going to compress the pistons back into it so our new pads will fit. So we'll take an old brake pad that came out of here, just put it across the two of them. Take our large C-clamp and get it lined up. Now we got it lined up and we'll just gently turn this in press them. You'll know you'll have a good caliper if they go in nice and easy. They shouldn't have too much resistance. They'll have some resistance, but if they don't move at all, your caliper might be seized, the pistons, and you should replace your caliper. That's good. Take this off. Can leave that up here. It's time to get this rotor off. There might be a retainer here that was just holding on. That's a little factory retainer. Just spin it off. You don't really need these. They just help to hold the rotor on. So the parking brake assembly or e-brake assembly is inside of here. It may be preventing this rotor from coming off easily. You can try to knock this with a dead blow hammer or a small mallet. If that doesn't work, you'll have to go in and we'll show you how to release the tension on the parking brake and that should help this slide right off. I'm going to try this mallet first, see if it comes off. Just kind of knock it free. So we got lucky, it came off pretty easy. Our parking brake assembly is wet with oil. So it's telling me there is an axle seal leaking, uh, but we're gonna uh, ignore that for now and continue with the brakes. We'll just clean it up. There is a, if you needed to adjust these parking shoes to get the brake caliper off, the adjuster is here, but there's an access window on the back side that's covered with a rubber plug. So you'll take a small flat bladed screwdriver and sort of pop it out. Be a little tricky to get out. Gonna have to find just the right angle. And it'll just pop right out. Then you can take a screwdriver and go in here. Let's see the spot. And you would twist it, uh, kind of push it upwards like this. And that would adjust the shoes inward and give you more clearance to get the rotor on or off. And if you need to adjust them afterwards, you can spin it out to uh, adjust the amount of drag that you have. And when you're done, don't forget to put this cap back in. I'm just using some brake parts cleaner, clean up some of the oil in here. Again, I know it needs an axle seal, but we're not doing that today. It's not uh, too, too bad, so we're gonna let it go. These are old brake rotor and pads from our vehicle and our brand new ones from 1AAuto.com. See, it's the exact same style and design. 
The brake pads match the new ones. They've got shims on them, wear indicators, same bolt pattern. Inside the drum is for the parking brake or e-brake as you might want to call it. These will fit great and work great on our vehicle. Just going to clean the hub. Got to put the rotor on backwards. This way I can clean it with brake parts cleaner. Put down any excess. Flip it over. Slides on nice. Use some more brake parts cleaner to clean off the oil that comes on these when they're shipped so they don't flash rust. We're going to clean and reuse our caliper hardware. They're stainless steel. Just spray them with some brake parts cleaner. Use a wire brush to knock off the grit and dirt. And do, this, this, do the same for both sides. This is ready to go back in the car. Just looking at the dust boots here on the slide pins. So this one's all, this one's nice and uh, pushed out, which is good. And this one is kind of weird looking and I'm looking at it and it has flipped itself inside out. So I'm just gonna gently take a small flat bladed screwdriver and pull it out and that's the way it should look. We're gonna clean and lubricate our slide pins. Wipe them down with a rag. Take some caliper grease. Apply it to them. Do the same to this one. Take our caliper bracket. I'm gonna get it started. Slide these in. It's like our outer pad. They're both identical, inner and outer. I'm not gonna clean the surface yet, but I am gonna put a little bit of caliper grease here in the ears. The reason why I'm not gonna clean the surface yet is because the way I'm gonna put these in, I'm probably gonna to touch the surface with my fingers and I'm gonna to need to clean it again anyways. I'm gonna start by, let to go this way. You can slide them up into the guides and then you can bring these down some more. Take your inside pad, do the same thing. A little bit of caliper grease on the ears. Slide it in this way. I have to actually open this up a bit. We got our brake pads lined up on the hardware. And this should just slide right down. We need to push those up. And those will come right down. And our boots popped right back over the pins, which is perfect. Now I can slide these up, hold them apart like that. See, I've touched them. So I'm going to take some brake parts cleaner and just clean them off. Got our caliper bolts handy, bracket bolts. So I'm going to take it and slide it over. Try to hit the edges. You need to bring the pads out. Get them lined up. If I catch the top one. Play with this a bit. Get lined up. Now I can get the bottom one. I'm going to torque the caliper mounting bracket bolts to 120 foot pounds. See our caliper, moves nice and free. Before we're done, after we put the wheel on and torque it and put the vehicle on the ground, we'll press in our brake pedal to bring the pistons back out. Reinstall our wheel. Start the lug nuts by hand. Just gonna use my socket and ratchet. Just snug these down before I lower the vehicle and torque them to the final spec. Torque the lug nuts to 120 foot-pounds and a cross pattern. Reinstall the hubcap. I'm gonna take just the socket and get these threaded on. 
After you finish the brakes, be sure to gently pump the pedal to bring the piston out to meet the rotor. Just pump until the pedal gets hard. And that feels good. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.